Good evening. I'm Nick Minock with WJLA 7 News on your side. Thank you all for joining us this evening for the Arlington Chamber of Commerce County Board Candidate Forum. I now have the pleasure of introducing our seven candidates. They're running for the two open seats on the Arlington County Board. Joining us tonight are Independent Audrey Clement, Democrat Marine Coffee, Democrat Susan Cunningham, Democrat Jonathan Dromgool, Democrat Natalie Roy, Democrat Julius J.D. Spain, and Democrat Tony Weaver. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Now the chamber, yep, round of applause. Now the chamber has included the candidates' biographies in all the programs, and for the interest of time, we'll let you read their biographies on your own. We will begin the opening remarks followed by a series of questions prepared by the chamber and ending with closing statements. We have drawn lots to determine the order of speaking tonight. We'll rotate which candidate speaks first with each question. We begin our remo opening remarks right now. Each candidate will have one minute each for opening statements, for question responses, and for closing statements. So we'll begin with opening statements with Tony. Hey, thank you very much. My name is Tony Weaver, and I'm a local to the area. I grew up uh, in Manassas and got a master's degree in business from UVA. From there, I went out to uh, Silicon Valley, worked in tech for a period of time, then founded a tech startup, came back to the area to help uh, grow and found my family business, been doing that for the last 10 years. During that time, I've been very involved with service. I've served as the president of the Arlington Rotary Club, and I'm a commissioner on the Fiscal Affairs Advisory Commission. Currently, we're facing a record high commercial office vacancy rate. I have elected, I would bring my technology and business background to help solve that problem and help uh, stabilize and increase county revenues. With growing revenues, we will be able to continue to deliver the high quality of services the county residents have come to expect. With that, I ask for your vote for county board. Thank you. Thank you. JD. Good evening, everyone. My name is Julius JD Spain Sr. I am a 26 year retired Marine. Uh, lived in Arlington for the past 14 years with my family in the Penrose community, and I'm a lifelong public servant. Most of you may know me as recently finishing up as president of the NAACP in Arlington branch where we took on a number of issues regarding s discrimination and systemic racism in Arlington. If elected to the county board, I believe quite frankly that we need steadfast leadership. Mental health advocacy is something that I'm, that's near and dear to my heart and feel that I want to champion every member of the county board. Economic security, affordable housing, and environmental sustainability are also key areas that I want to focus on. I look forward to this discussion tonight, and hopefully you all will get out and vote on June 20th. Thank you. Thank you, J.D. Natalie. Hi, I'm Natalie Roy. I'm running to bring new energy, transparency, and responsiveness to the county board. It's crucial to have somebody on the county board who has experience in the trenches, knows the county well, and tells it like it is. With me, what you see is what you get. I'm not shy about asking the tough, tough questions, and I'm not shy about challenging the status quo. As a 32-year resident in Arlington, I have decades of community experience and also decades of professional executive experience. I got out of my comfort zone and launched this, my first ever run for public office, because I opposed the county's recent sweeping zoning change. Although the new changes would likely benefit me as a realtor, they would be harmful to the community, which is my first priority. I support smart growth and comprehensive planning, two things that have made our community prosperous over the last 40 years. Thanks very much, and I look forward to your questions. Jonathan. Hola, buenas noches. My name is Jonathan Dromgul. I'm a renter, a member of the LGBTQ community, and a proud immigrant from Guadalajara, Mexico. My family came to the United States in search of the American dream, a dream such as being able to buy a house, start a small business, and make sure that their kids have the best education possible. I want to make sure that this dream is an attainable reality for everybody here in the county. I was fortunate enough to attend Georgetown University for both undergrad and grad school, where I got a master's in public policy. During that time is also when I met my husband, who went to Marymount University right here in Arlington, and encouraged me to move over to Arlington. So we've been living in this area for over half a decade. I have had the opportunity to have multiple leadership roles within the Democratic Party, leading the statewide arm of the Latino, um, the Democratic Latino Organization of Virginia. But I've also led the um, Inter-American Development Bank's public consultation process across Latin America. And now I have the honor of working closely with the Biden-Harris administration to make sure our, our appointees reflect the diversity of America. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation and going from there. Thank you. Susan. 
Great, and good evening. My name is Susan Cunningham. I'm also coincidentally running for Arlington County Board and glad to be with you all this evening. I have been a resident of the county for a little over 25 years. I am the only parent of kids in APS uh, that is running for this position, which I think is quite important. Um, and my uh, professional career, I trained as an engineer, so I'm really focused on problem solving and data analysis. But most of my career has really been as an executive, both in the nonprofit sector and in government. Um, so I'm just very excited to offer my leadership to the county at this particularly important juncture um, as we uh, face some interesting challenges from office space to schooling and move forward to um, the next chapter of our, uh, of our county. So looking forward to your questions tonight. Thank you. All right, Maureen. Hi, my name is Maureen Coffey. I am yet another candidate for Arlington County Board. Uh, I think Arlington is ex an exceptional community and truly I jumped in because I want to keep Arlington the exceptional community that it's been. Uh, my fear though is that if we don't get a handle on our economic stability issues and our affordability that we can't continue to be the community that we have been. Uh, that's why my number one priority is focusing on economic stability for the people who are here in Arlington. Um, and to get there I think we really need a clearer plan. We need to know how we're going to move from where we are at as a community today to where we can actually serve the needs of everyone and that's things like housing but it's also schools and child care it's mental health care uh, it's parks and green space all of it has to come together to build Arlington together um, I do that in my everyday life I'm a public policy professional at the Center for American Progress I have experience in the concrete detailed policy planning and implementation and that's what I hope to bring to the Arlington County Board Audrey Thank you for inviting me to this forum. I'm Audrey Clement, the independent candidate for Arlington County Board. As a 19-year Westover resident, longtime civic activist, and past member of the Transportation Commission, I'm running for County Board because it has pushed harmful policies resulting in overcrowded schools, gentrifi gentrification, and a 10-year average annual effective tax rate increase that is almost twice the rate of inflation. I also oppose missing middle upzoning. The ordinance that the county rammed through earlier this year despite massive opposition from homeowners. The only way to defeat missing middle at the ballot box is to vote in the general election on November the 7th for Clement, the independent for Arlington County Board. If elected, I pledge to seek immediate tax relief for residents and businesses and replace missing middle with a plan that actually provides affordable housing. Thank you, Audrey. And that concludes our opening remarks. We'll now go to our first question, which is the office vacancy rate has risen to a record high 23% in the first quarter of 2023. The pandemic has profoundly changed the demand for office space. What guidance would you as a county board member provide to address this crucial problem? You have one minute to answer. We'll begin with JD. Well, thank you for that, that question. And let's make no mistake about it. Corporate vacancy rate is not a new issue here in Arlington. We were told about this way before Amazon, before COVID. The problem is, is something you've heard earlier, we don't have problem solvers on the board. What I would like to see happen is because we're in a new environment, a hybrid work environment, is do more to work with our local organizations like colleges and universities and corporations and bring in a new type of business, a new innovative economy, whether that's in pharmaceutical, whether that's in biotech, whether that's in lab science. Because what we need to do is we need to put people in buildings. Yes, there's a lot of conversation about well, we can make how make these buildings affordable, but it's just it's not that easy. Sometimes it costs more to outfit those buildings than it is to tear them down. So what I want to look at is working with economic development partners, colleges, universities, philanthropists, and bringing a new style of work here in Arlington, similar to what's going on in Montgomery County, and compete for those jobs and bring them here to Arlington. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Natalie. I would do two things. It is a a, a real alarming problem problem in the county. Um, and I would do first, get together a, a high level public task force to specifically look at this, this issue, look at two specific, have two things that are charged for it. One would be short term responses and the, the second one would be a long term strategy. We need to make it high level, we need to be working and focusing on it. Second, I would start looking at things that are creative. What can we do with these, this empty office space? We're, look, we're doing that now. What can we convert into housing? What can we look at for civic and historical purposes? For an example, the, the Black Heritage Museum, a jewel in this county, needs a permanent, permanent home. 
this is a great opportunity for the county to partner with a private sector uh, member and to find a place for this jewel in the county. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Jonathan. So I think first and foremost, we need to recognize kind of the fundamental shift that's happened with people starting to work more from home. The fact that we've prioritized office space for such a long time that now we really got to look at how can we be the most innovative county we can be and test that out here within our 26 square miles. Um, there's already those steps to being taken place, you know, a couple new businesses, new business ventures that we're willing to test in some of these vacant office spaces. but. It's, it's piece by piece. We're having these conversations and saying, okay, we're able to approve this new type of business going into um, a vacant building. I think what would be best for the business community is actually providing and creating a list of things we cannot um, bring into those vacant spaces. Things right now that we're saying we're not willing to attract as a business here into the county. That way businesses have that opportunity to say, okay, we know what we can't do. So that opens us up to the opportunity of what can we do? And I think that's a great approach that we need to start looking here in the county, seeing what can be converted to residential. That's going to take us a little longer and we know that that conversation has started as well. And then what incentives can we give to people to move into one building? Thank you, Jonathan. Susan. So I think I start with the principle of never waste a good crisis. So 23% vacancy in our office space really is a crisis. It's a huge financial hit to the county and likely to increase um, drastically over the next couple of years. But anytime there's a challenge like that, it really is an invitation to innovation and to creativity. And I think just as we've been through COVID and each of you were really great partners with the county of thinking differently about outdoor seating, about how do we serve um, our, our clients differently, that's the kind of innovation that we need. And the county needs to get out of the way uh, and be a partner with you. And that's what I've done across my career, whether it was at the US Treasury, which is not known necessarily as the most creative uh, organization. Um, but when you get the barriers out of the way, you can make really good progress really fast. And so I'm excited about bringing everyone together to make good progress. Maury. I think there's three primary things that I would do. The first is we need to make it easier to do business in Arlington. The second is that we need to work on our regional competitiveness. And the third is that we really do need to transition our thinking into this post-COVID world um, of looking at different types of businesses. Uh, on making it easier to do business in Arlington, we all know that the permitting process is a mess here. Um, we do not have a customer service oriented process right now that makes it really hard. And we have a reputation in the region at this point of being difficult to work with that doesn't bring people in. People want to do business in Arlington. They feel like they can't. Um, when it comes to regional competitiveness, it is so expensive to live here. Childcare is so expensive. When people are looking regionally at where they want to open a business, we have to ask ourselves, why are they picking Arlington and get very clear on what we have to offer. And then third and finally, um, changing the way we think about business is really important because we're not going to go back to a pre-COVID workforce. We're just not. So bringing in things that are experiential, things that are social service oriented, that have to be in person is going to be critical. Audrey. To reduce Arlington's 23% office vacancy rate, I will insist that the county require federal agencies in the D.C. area comply with Executive Order 12072 issued by Jimmy Carter in 1978 to revitalize and strengthen the nation's central cities. The order stipulates that whenever a federal agency relocates, it must give priority to an available space located in a city's central business district rather than in a suburb. Enforcement of EO12072 would reduce Arlington's office vacancy rate, yet most federal agencies have ignored it. For example, GSA has announced plans to relocate the FBI to a suburb. Arlington County itself has never invoked EO12072 to get federal agencies to relocate or remain here. If elected, I'm going to insist on enforcement of EO12072. Thank you. Tony. This is absolutely one of the top issues facing our, uh, our county. Uh, if elected, I'd focus on better funding Arlington Economic Development so we can bring in more companies uh, to the county. I would focus on overhauling the zoning ordinance so we can make it easier for uh, existing companies to use office space in different ways. And I would put more incentives in place to encourage adaptive reuse of buildings and redevelop some of the space uh, towards housing that is currently underutilized. In terms of Arlington Economic Development, I'm on the Fiscal Affairs Advisory Commission. I watch this very carefully. The current board recently cut a, an assistant director position. Eliminating positions 
when to the organization that is responsible for bringing in more companies when we're in a crisis like this is irresponsible and i would do the opposite i would put more resources towards arlington economic development thank you next question as we move into a new economic landscape what tactics do you while Arlington County to employ to support small business development and retention. We'll begin with Natalie. Thank you. We need to really focus and make it easier for small businesses like mine to flourish here, not just to survive, but to flourish and thrive. We need access to capital, visibility, we need flexibility as well. And we also need, and I know a lot of small businesses need, parking and access. Parking is vital for, sm for small businesses. I'm big on biking and walking, but there are many, there are some folks who just can't get there by doing that. We can't take away those parking spaces. So we should pat ourselves in the back for what we have done on transit oriented and oriented development, but we cannot take every spot away. There's also been signage, signage is, issues in the county. And I think that many of us know about the outrageous con, you know, situations where someone's painted a, um, some them, uh, something about what they sold in their store, on their, on their building. We need to be flexible. We need to work with small businesses and make them feel welcome here. Jonathan. Yeah, we definitely need to streamline the process um, for which a small business can come into the county and in order to also be able to retain them. You know, too many small businesses and folks who want to start something have these ideas, start looking on our website, start looking at different resources, and there's too many tabs. There's too many things to click through. There's not an easy way for them to say, hey, these are the five things I need to get started. So I think streamlining the process there because we really need to make it easier for small businesses to do business here in the county. Too many innovative folks who want to start something here are being met with a similar conversation such as renters and saying, if you cannot afford to be in the county, go ahead and look elsewhere. We're losing innovation, we're losing talent, we're losing opportunities. So we really have to streamline those processes, make sure that folks who want to start a small business have that opportunity and that we're doing what we can to incentivize them to stay here in the county and not look elsewhere to create those opportunities. Susan. Great, so there are a couple of things, you know, again, I would really focus on burden reduction. There are a couple of real pain points, like the tan tangible property tax for some of our smallest businesses. It's a, it's a really dumb, <laughs> a dumb tax that takes a lot of time. And I have a small business and, um, you know, have had to work with that a few times. Um, but just in general, thinking about what gets in the way. And part of that is a conversation. It's an invitation to partnership and saying, just as we did during COVID, what do you need? And how do we get better at that? And I think the chambers played a really important role there. Um, the county has to be a good partner there. And luckily, our businesses show up and are willing to have that conversation. So I'm looking forward to that leadership. Lori. Yeah, I, I think there's so much. We have a rich business community, especially small businesses, and the barriers that they're facing, things like the permitting process, things like um, who they can turn to when they have a problem. We need to be more systemic about solving these issues. If the same type of business is facing the same problem seven different times, why aren't we solving that overall? Why are we solving it on a one-off basis? We have to have a get-to-yes mentality where we can actually say, you know, eight different restaurants have had the same permit problem, why don't we change the process? Uh, because I think that that is really discouraging. I talked to a gentleman uh, just this week who had a food truck in Arlington, decided when they opened their brick and mortar to move out of the county, and we can't be having that. Those are the people we want to keep here. Um, they're Arlingtonians and they're part of this, so we have to find ways to build relationships, work together, and really focus on get to yes. Audrey. I can attest to the fact that Arlington County provides a corporate-friendly business environment as I work for a fast-growing startup headquartered in the R&B corridor. Yet retailers are struggling. According to a Publisher's Weekly story in 2019, the county government's new methods of raising revenue have caused bookstore owner Eileen McGurvey uh, to go on the brink. Occupancy costs, which were 4% of overhead a few years ago, are now 17%, due in part to a 30% real, real estate tax hike. The Board of Assessors sent a letter explaining that properties like hers would now be taxed based on the property owner's net income rather than the tenant's. If elected, I will ask the county auditor to activate an audit of the county's real estate assessment and appeals practices, which is listed in the auditor's work plan plan as a future project. Tony. Yes, as a tech entrepreneur and a small business owner, I found that hiring and access to capital are the two biggest challenges that I've faced. I think that we need to put more resources towards BizLaunch and have a better connection between BizLaunch and Arlington Community High School 
the Career Center, so we have a school to job pipeline going on. I'd definitely like to see that happen. I would also like to see greater community lending so that we can have uh, clear access to capital, particularly to underserved uh, potential entrepreneurs and business owners who don't necessarily have the best credit and can't necessarily get uh, access to loans through conventional means. So for me, in my experience as an entrepreneur, those have been the big problems, and those are the solutions that I'd like to put in place to solve them. And JD? You know, thank you for the question. What I have seen in the past couple of years here in Arlington, I've been here 14 years, is that our small businesses, our women-owned businesses, are losing it. They're leaving Arlington. They don't have an ally. They don't have a champion. What I want to do is champion them. We need to work closely with the chamber to incentivize them to have partnerships. We need to work with Biz Launch. But what I'll tell you, as I walk around Arlington, whether it's on Columbia Pike or whether it's on Langston Boulevard, the doors are being shut. People aren't getting living wages. They can't afford to live in Arlington. So we got to do more. we got to work with these landlords. Because some of these people are leaving because they can't afford to pay $15,000 a month in rent. Right? So I'm going to work hard, if you're elected to the board, to work with these landlords and work to keep these businesses, more especially our small minority-owned businesses in Arlington, because we're losing them. All right, on to our next question. As reported in local news, businesses and builders have struggled with long delays in the permit Arlington system, costing them time and significant amounts of money. How would you work with the county manager and staff to ensure that businesses get the necessary permits easily and efficiently? We'll start now with Jonathan. Yeah, this is something I know on a personal level. My husband manages uh, three restaurants, two in D.C. and one in Bethesda. I'm constantly hearing about that permit process there. And you know, when we're trying to bring those businesses here into the county, we cannot um, delay a business from starting because of this permit process. We're going to eventually lose that business again to a neighboring jurisdiction where it's easier to do business. So that process has become so burdensome on some of these businesses and so expensive for small changes that they want to do that they say, all right, I'm not going to go ahead and make that change to my entry point or whatever it might be. And therefore, they're losing clients. They're losing folks who actually want to build or uh, work in those spaces. So we really got to look at our permit process, see what things are just going to be you know, easier buy right issues and say, all right, this is a standard permit that you need. We're going to make it easier and faster, a fast track path for you to get that permit. Also, if we're going to switch to an online system, we got to make sure that system works and is it more expensive for folks to use and doesn't take you twice as long to actually get the permits that you need. Susan. So I'm probably the only one up here who's pulled a permit as a, uh, you know, as a board member for a church, a board member for a childcare, an a affordable housing um, landlord, a private landlord, and a individual homeowner. Um, and that's all just in Arlington. I've also done that in DC in a number of those categories. We are not the best in the region, and we have to be. Uh, we are in a very, very competitive region, and many partners will no longer work here. Um, I think the best example is probably our uh, Fire Station 8, which is a county-led project, which has been many, many years in the making and was recently uh, announced that it was going to be eight months behind because we couldn't pull the permits. Something's not working, um, and that happens, but we need to get in there and understand what's going on. Some of it is definitely a systems rollout, but some of it is really just bureaucracy that builds up over time, and some of it is a workforce issue. So we, we have to get at that. It affects our economic um, competitiveness and really affects our costs in the county. Maureen? Yeah, I think this is obviously a huge problem. Um, we didn't move our permitting system online until the most recent years, which is embarrassing. And somehow when we did do that, it got worse than using paper. Uh, I don't think that that is something that we should tolerate. I think that whether you are a business owner, whether you are a homeowner, um, if you're trying to build housing, we desperately need these things to come to Arlington. And so putting up barriers is not the way to go. Uh, regulation and permits should be there to protect the health, safety, and wellness of the community. So we need to find ways uh, to make sure that we are still doing that, but we are not putting up other barriers that are unnecessary in the process. Um, simplifying, making sure that we have a one-time turnaround perhaps where you're not submitting multiple different permits, but we can do it all together because many types of businesses, there's a pretty standard order that you're gonna go through. Um, and if we can simplify, regulate, and put that all into one process rather than having to go through multiple steps with multiple departments and multiple people who aren't getting back to you, you know, I think that that's gonna be one of the number one ways we can simplify this. Audrey. 
When it comes to doing business in Arlington, Permit Arlington is the cat's meow. According to its website, Permit Arlington is a countywide initiative to improve land development, building, and permitting processes that include new online permitting system, refreshed website, and centralized space for in-person customer visits. Both physical and virtual spaces aim to achieve a transformative customer experience. Permit Arlington's customer portal enables online applications for literally dozens of activities, including business, building, food, land disturbance, parking, right-of-way, and utility permits. But the sheer number of permits is overwhelming. I plan to study the feasibility of consolidating the many permits required for a business operation listed on the Permit Arlington website into a more manageable number. Tony. Yeah, so everybody hates pulling permits. Uh, I own a residential contracting company. A lot of experience with this across jurisdictions, and uh, I don't know that we're ever going to be like the place you go on a Sunday afternoon just because uh, you like to be there. But the bottom line is uh, when you roll out a new system, and we needed to. We needed to go from the antiquated 1990s uh, paper-based system to an online system. You need to put more resources in place to make sure that you cover gaps in services we're currently offering permit in-person uh, experiences two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And of those two days a week, every third Thursday, they shut down at noon, right? I mean, what's going on with that? I think that we need to put more resources towards uh, in-person permitting so that folks can go, they can bring their plans in, they can have them assessed with a real person, get some back and forth. Uh, and that's what I would do if I were rolling out a new system. I'd allocate more resources towards uh, those types of in-person experiences. Thank you. JD. Yeah, thank you. So this is not the first time we've heard about the permitting issues, dilemmas in Arlington County government. And I'll, and I'll tell you what I think it is, what it rolls down to. It's accountability. We are one of the smartest areas, regions in the Commonwealth, yet no one's being held accountable for the failure of doing their job, right? We rolled out an online system not too long ago. We found out we have all these issues. Got it. It may be resources that we need. But I also want to have a conversation with the county manager, the deputy county manager, and colleagues on the county board to figure out where are the trouble points? Where are we having the hiccups? Where are the problems? Because when we find out where the problem is, then we can assess and fix and, run and, and rectify what the issues are. I don't believe that people in county government can't find, can't find a solution to what's going on. I feel people just haven't been held accountable to do their job. Thank you. Natalie. This is one of the reasons I'm running. The county needs to be more responsive to people in the county, to our residents, to people who are looking for permits. I have a lot of experience in this area. I'm a real estate professional. I have clients who have trouble getting permits just to build a small addition. It's actually easier, in some cases, for them to tear down their whole house than to actually get a permit to put up a small addition. That shouldn't be allowed to happen. We need to be more efficient. We need to really look at our system, be more responsive, and we need one-stop shopping. But it's very important. And we also need, with that efficiency, we also need to be very careful and make sure that we are safeguarding our environment. We are still doing, looking at things for safety concerns. So I'm all for looking at the permitting process and making it more efficient and really looking at one-stop shopping for the county and making it more responsive. All right, later this year, the county board will be voting on the adoption and implementation of a plan, Plan Langston Boulevard, concluding a 10-year-long process to develop a plan to grow the corridor into a green main street for Arlington. What are your thoughts on the plan, and what is one specific policy that you think is key for the development and redevelopment of this corridor? And to change things up, we're going to reverse the order of the questions. We're going to go to Susan for this one first. Great. So um, I've lived in Arlington a little over 25 years, and that has been all along Langston Boulevard across that time and a couple other places as well. Um, and I remember as a 20-something riding my bike in a pitiful uh, lack of sidewalk there and saying, this is maybe the ugliest road I've ever been on. Um, how did this happen? Uh, and, and asking that question over years. So I'm, I'm delighted that we're really on the precipice of finally having a plan um, that lays out for the next 50 years or so what is possible along Langston Boulevard. It's been a long time coming. Uh, and I've been uh, part of that. I think one of the biggest questions in that plan is how are we going to incent and support our businesses, especially our retail and housing um, development to do the right thing 
Uh, parking is an element of that and height is an element of that. And so I think as we get into the next couple of weeks, that plan will be rolling out. The devil's in the details as it always is. Um, and getting the finances right uh, will be a very important part of it. Jonathan. Yeah, I'm, I'm very supportive of a plan for Langston Boulevard that's going to make uh, that community more walkable, increase green spaces, and also bring affordable housing and just more diverse housing into the area. Um, it just like Susan mentioned, it's an area where my husband and I drove through a lot, especially when he was at Marymount, um, and it's one that we would love to see continue to grow and one that has so much potential. Potential to bring businesses that are integrated right in line with public transportation, that are you know communicating with walkable sidewalks that also make it easier for you to bike around that area. It's one of those kind of last few spaces in Arlington where we say, hey, businesses are already here. How can we take this to the next level? How can we bring in more a sense of community into the area? And so I think we really gotta look at making sure that it's walkable, that the businesses are attracted there, but ultimately that we're also connecting it to public transportation. Um, and that's one of the things that I would love to see moving forward is how we're gonna integrate that aspect into Plan Langston Boulevard. Okay, Natalie. Thank you. I think Langston Boulevard has so much potential. There's so much uh, great stuff that's being looked at, being planned for. Um, I'm personally very excited about anything that makes for more protected bike lanes, better pedestrian access, all kinds of walkability. Um, but I think we have to do two things. We have to really make sure we do our due diligence. We have to make sure that all the important studies on environment, on transportation, all of those are done before anything is really voted on. And I think that's very, very important. And two, we have to make sure that all stakeholders are involved. And that means all the businesses on that corridor, on the boulevard, bring them into this. They have to be, we have to share information as we go along. And that's also all the neighbors. So that we do what we didn't do with Missing Middle. We bring people into the process and we hear what they want and then we respond that way. And I think that's really important with Langston Boulevard going forward. It's a, an incredible possibility potential out there, but we got we have to do it right. JD? Yeah, I think Lanskinson Boulevard, uh, the potential there, as you've heard already, is quite endless. Uh, connecting it to East Falls Church, all the way up through Cherrydale and to Roslyn, there's a lot of great things there. Walkability, we want to make sure that's fake, that's there, uh, that we have adequate green space. But at the end of the day, something Natalie just hit on, we got to make sure we have stakeholder input. What we found in a lot of these policy discussions that have taken on in Arlington, we have failed tremendously, give it an F, to ensure that people that are going to be greatly affected by some of these changes are brought to the table before we deliberate and put and enact some of these policies. So I want to make sure we do this right and we leave no one behind, but I'm proud of where we are and I'm also excited about the potential. Okay, Tony. Yes, uh, I'm fully in support of Plan Langston Boulevard. I, uh, I've lived up there in two different times in my life, uh, two different locations. And walkability, uh, green spaces are definitely things that folks have said and I, I totally agree with. But uh, affordable housing, making sure that, uh, that we, get, we get it right with affordable housing in this area is incredibly important. Uh, I think that in the past, we have a tendency to concentrate our affordable housing in Columbia Pike. I mean, let, let's be frank, and this is a great opportunity that we cannot miss to get some additional affordable housing uh, north of 50 up in that area. And one of the big upsides of that is we're getting, uh, we're going to be able to get kids into better schools, and that has a huge impact on uh, upward social mobility. So huge opportunity. We can't, we can't miss that opportunity to do that. Audrey. According to the 2022 Langston Boulevard Preliminary Concept Plan, the report, quote, removes missing middle housing types and forms as a specific component, end quote. My question is how can a serious planning document not include discussion of the impacts of a massive countywide rezoning? One resident I talked to said in reading this, if the plan is to have on average four to seven story development, mostly residential on top of commercial, and some areas will go up to 15 stories, and it will add thousands of housing units, then where is the shortage needed by missing middle? Again, Plan Langston Boulevard is steaming ahead as we talk missing middle. The numbers seem astronomical along Langston Boulevard in terms of new housing. Has the issue of coordination or choice of the two plans <laughs> been discussed in any materials or meetings? And I think the answer to that question is no, and it's got to change to yes. All right. Yeah, I think the plan Langston Boulevard process is 
so great for Arlington. It's really integrated all of the things we care about with housing, thinking about schools, thinking about transportation, thinking about environment and green space, doing it all. I would really like to see in the future for processes like this that it not take 10 full years, um, but I think we can hopefully move forward from that. Uh, there's two things that I think are gonna be really integral to this uh, plan working and succeeding as it goes on. One is transit connectivity, not just along the corridor, but between corridors. We have a need to get people you know, to go north and south and not just east to west, which is how our transit system has been oriented. It's been around a commute, around a nine to five job. Um, but right now, people wanna go places to socialize and they, don't, they shouldn't be car reliant for that. The second is really creating a plan to preserve the businesses that are on Langston right now as things redevelop. There are so many family businesses, minority-owned businesses, that are going to have huge disruption. And we need to make sure that we've planned and figured out what they're going to do next so that we can keep them there once the redevelopment happens. If elected to the county board, what policies would you support to promote both the creation of new committed affordable units as well as the preservation of existing market rate affordable units? We'll start with Marie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that some of the biggest things that we're going to need to think about uh, is creative financing. Things like the Barcroft Apartments that brought in a bunch of different players. It brought in tax credits. It brought in county financing. It brought in private financing all together um, to create a really innovative project that we haven't seen before in Arlington. Things like that, leveraging community development financial institutions, leveraging community land trusts. Um, we have to change what the inputs are for financing if we're gonna change what the outputs are. Uh, that goes for both producing new units as well as uh, preserving the ones that we have because it's actually cheaper if we pay upfront to commit a unit for affordable than it is to continue to pay um, rent subsidies for people to stay in Arlington. And so we really need to think about the long term on that and we really need to have a pipeline that matches uh, across different types of housing as well, the needs, because we're lacking in family-sized units, we're lacking in accessible units, um, and so I think also extracting more from the uh, community development, community benefits process during development. Susan. So I've spent a lot of time in housing. Um, as an engineer, I, I built uh, student housing in the district, and then I recently ran our largest affordable housing provider here. And it is a nuanced and challenging um, area. Uh, there are a lot of layers of, of finance that make it doable for some of the bigger, large projects. But here in Arlington, our stock is aging. And so whether it's currently market affordable or market not quite affordable, um, or committed, that aging property is going to be a major focus for us in the next decade or two um, as some of our condo buildings age out and have major, uh, major uh, renovation needs. In addition, the family size units is a huge issue. Our families in Arlington, uh, a large, our larger immigrant families are being told they can't live in Arlington if they're more than seven people because we don't have committed affordable units that support that. And so we've got to figure out a scattered site approach or a different family size unit approach that uses the single family homes or maybe the missing middle as it gets built to better serve our community. Jonathan. Yeah, housing is something that I'm constantly thinking about as a renter and trying to figure out, okay, when that next rent increase comes in, am I still going to be able to afford to live here in the county? Am I going to have to look elsewhere? But that conversation is also happening with home, homeowners all across Arlington. It's happening predominantly with our communities of color, predominantly communities of South Arlington, Arlington saying, with new taxes, with different changes that are coming up, will I be able to continue to call Arlington home? I think that's something that we really got to take a look at, especially for our populations that are living at 30% of the area median income. We just don't have enough housing stock available, whether that's for renters or for homeowners that actually meet those needs. We know that there's about double the demand for that type of housing as the type of housing that's available. And then you start looking at, you know, even if you live closer to the $125,000, which is the average um, median income here in Arlington, even if you live there, the majority of our community is rent burden, is mortgage burden. So we're really looking at one of the most expensive counties. So we have to figure out different financing options, work with partners in order to make sure that you're able to call this area home. Natalie. Couple quick things. Um, we need a comprehensive plan. We need to actually look and be able to look at the county, see where there's, in the Landstrap County, where there's possibilities. So a great example is the Key Bridge Marriott, which was condemned earlier this year. Five and a half acres of pre premium property has been condemned, it's sitting there. We need to be able to have a plan that makes it, uh, make it, makes it a bit, uh, 
uh, uh, an option for the county to partner with a private sector partner to see what we can do to create affordable ha housing units, to create deeply affordable housing units, to create all kinds of options for that piece of land. The other thing I would do as a real estate agent, I feel the county needs to negotiate better with developers. We are in need of family units. We need to make sure that any new pro uh, development project that gets built, that they have uh, three bedrooms, not just two and one, and that because that is needed for families and also more affordable units as well. Thank you. JD. Well, yeah. Well, I'm a proud endorser of Northern Virginia Realtors and also Yimby's. Uh, I think because I bring some common sense uh, solutions to the talk to the conversation and some historical aspects to our housing issues. I am a champion for housing. The, the fact of the matter is in Arlington it's a high cost of living. Values of housing have gone up every year. And I think we've found ourselves just doing too much instead of focusing on the short term. So I know there's some folks that are on the board right now that want to look at community land trust, an alternative way to get more affordable housing in Arlington. So I fully support that. I think, you know, when we talk about committed affordable housing and market rate uh, affordable housing, yes, we can go on and on. We need more of everything. The fact is that we have 6,000 people coming to Arlington every year and there's not enough housing stock. That's why I applaud the county board in taking such a historical uh, mark and removing exclusionary zoning. Why? Because we can diversify our portfolio now like investments and build more housing around Arlington. I think that's a step in the right direction and a very slow, and methodical process. Thank Tony. you. Yeah, over the last 20 years, we've seen a precipitous drop off of uh, market rate affordable units in the area. Uh, we're going to need to do quite a bit to account for this. I think that we need to put more resources towards uh, committed affordable units through uh, partnerships with our nonprofit developers. That means funding AHIF better, the Affordable Housing Investment Fund. Got to put more money towards that. We also need to put more money towards uh, affordable housing grants. Bottom line, it's going to be very, very difficult for us to increase uh, the number of market rate affordable units in the county. We need to supplement that by providing more targeted affordable uh, housing grants to particularly working families, folks who uh, have children. I'd like to see them be able to keep their kids in our high quality Arlington schools for a longer period of time. And for me, that's a, uh, that's a positive investment. Thank you. Audrey. If elected, I will urge the board to scrap the recently adopted missing middle ordinance as a revenue generating cash cow that will not redress the effects of exclusionary zoning and will not provide starter homes for moderate income residents. Missing middle will inflate land values and real estate taxes, drive out existing minority residents, accelerate gentrification of Arlington neighborhoods, increase school overcrowding, and exacerbate flooding and tree canopy loss. To promote affordable housing, I will rezone neighborhood by neighborhood based on simple to understand floor area ratio rules as recommended by the Laboratory for Architecture. Promote office to residential building conversions, also known as O2R. Invest in community land trusts and restore the partial tax credit for renovation of multifamily dwellings, which the county board repealed in 2021. And this is our final question before closing statements, which is what is one policy passed by the county board recently that you think was a mistake? Audrey, we'll start with you. Well, of course, I just mentioned missing middle, but my top budget priorities are reducing the tax rate and fiscal transparency, which clearly the county board has not done. On April 22nd, the board adopted a $1.5 billion budget that includes a 4.7% effective real estate tax rate increase. This brings the county's annual average annual 10-year effective tax rate increase to 4.5% or almost double the 10-year average rate of inflation. The county argues that it's not tax gouging because the tax hike is driven by rising real estate assessments, not the tax rate. Yet Fairfax County Board of Supervisors Chair Jeffrey McKay recently told his constituents, quote, I will not support a budget that does not reduce the tax rate. I agree. If elected, I will seek to reduce the tax rate by eliminating pork and scrutinizing the handouts extended to gimme groups in the annual budget charade. Marie. Yeah, thanks. 
Um, yeah, I do think it's tough when we judge the county board's decisions because they have access to so much more and different information than the public really has. Um, they're being briefed constantly. They have different information. Um, and I think for me, the most recent one is the, the low amount that we put into AHIF in this year's budget, the Affordable Housing Investment Fund. Um, I think that when we know that prices are going up, when we know that this is kind of an imminent problem, and when we know that really AHIF needs to be funded at $40 million a year, putting $15 million in um, is pretty disappointing. Uh, it has to be a priority for us. It has to be something that the county is, is singularly focused on because these are long-term investments. Housing is not something that happens overnight. It happens over years and it happens over decades. And so making sure that we have the money there to act when we need it is going to be super critical. And I just think that the county board can do more there. Susan. I think the, the piece you led with, Maureen, is really important, which is the county board shouldn't have vastly more information than the public. I think some transparency issues are at a foot there, and that is one piece to get back to. But in terms of your specific question, the policy that I would change definitely is the, the current version of the expanded housing options. I think that we moved too quickly and we skipped over some of the pieces that are crucial to us as a community. One is affordability, which we really completely stepped over. Two is environmental sustainability, which we missed so many opportunities to improve, and we can go back and hit uh, in the future. And then three is, is financial analysis, and it may well have been done uh, behind the scenes, but it is not clear right now what the financial impact of that decision and how it fits with the other um, issues in the county. And I think those are all issues that are uh, relevant to all of us and need to be more transparent. Jonathan. Yeah, so I think we continue talking about expanded housing options. I'm someone who's pro uh, missing middle and what was passed, but I would have loved to have seen that go further. I think when we set a 56 unit cap, we're setting an arbitrary you know, demand and supply into the system. And we know that there's not that much of an uptake on these policies. So I would have loved to have seen you know, that 56 be changed to something higher, just given the sunset period that is going to exist on that policy. At the same time, as someone who's you know, constantly worried about our communities of color and how affordability is going to impact them, I would have loved to see something in that policy that would have required a certain level of those um, new developments to be affordable. Um, again, if we're going with 56, 30% of that should have been at a point where it would have been affordable to a larger portion of the population. Again, the more we would have expanded that cap, the more we would have been able to actually say, hey, you know, 10% needs to be available for 10% AMI folks across the county. So that's one of the biggest things right now. And as we move forward, we want that to be changed. Natalie. I'm a big supporter of affordability and, divert and promoting diversity. I have decades of work on environmental issues. I've run two environmental groups. And for the life of me, I could not figure out why the board went down the path that they went with this density everywhere plan. I, it is why, it is the big reason that I jumped into the race, my first ever uh, venture into for looking for public office, and I was just dumbfounded. It is pinning its hopes on developers to, to build affordable housing, to promote diversity that's not credible, and what's even more frustrating is that they didn't do their homework. They didn't look at the impacts on parking, on infrastructure, on our tree canopy, on our environment, on our, on our uh, you know, um, emergency response. It was, it was uh, to me, a very irresponsible move. And if I had been on the board, I would have voted no, regardless of what everyone else had done. Thank you. JD. Wow. Um, I, I, there's so much to say. And, and I want to talk about housing because I just heard a lot of things. And, and, and when we have 20 some organizations that represents thousands of people, to include the Sierra Club, to include an organization to which one member on this board actually ran, who supported Mr. Middle, I find it perple I'm perplexed that we have people now that say, we all did it wrong. But moving on, let me tell you something that's relative. The county board in December approved $50,000 in a staff report for educating and informing our electorate on ranked choice voting. It never made its way to the budget. And as I go around and knock doors right now, and as we can see in some of the, it just came out of Arlington now a few days ago, people, ballots that are being rejected, especially the absentee ballots, we have not done enough to educate and inform our electorate on ranked choice voting, voting. There are people still showing up that have no idea what's going on. I support ranked choice voting. 
but we did it wrong. We rolled it out the wrong way, and we did not educate and inform the entire electorate like we should have. And the $50,000 never made it to the budget. Thank Tony. you. Yeah, it's such a great question. Uh, one thing that constantly drives me nuts is that the, uh, the, the board is constantly amending the zoning ordinance to allow new types of activities for, uh, for office space. So every six, eight months, you'll see an article in Arl Now that now we can uh, allow podcasts or 3D printing or urban farms. And all of this is great, but the bottom line is we need to overhaul the zoning ordinance and move towards an approach that doesn't list out every allowable business activity towards an approach that limits negative activities, a nuisance abased, abatement strategy. This allows so much more flexibility uh, in the code. It allows innovative business models and business activities to be accommodated on the front end rather, rather than constantly playing catch up on the back end. So that's my top uh, pet peeve. Thank you. Those are all our questions for this evening. We will now hear closing okay. statements. Each candidate has one minute for his or her remarks. We'll begin with Tony. Yeah, so I'm a strong progressive candidate. I uh, believe in education, environmental sustainability. I believe that every uh, college, every student should have a real uh, shot at going to college. I feel that it's both the smart and the, uh, and the right thing to do to roll out electric vehicle charging infrastructure. But I feel that we need to make sure that we got the revenues in place uh, to make all of those things happen. I bring a technology and a business background to the board. It's a perspective that uh, we're a little bit light on on the board right now. And if I were elected to the board, I would focus on that. I would focus on reducing that number so that we can uh, ensure we can stabilize revenues, grow revenues, so that we can continue to deliver the level of service to, uh, to the members of our community that we have in the past. That, thank you so much for, uh, for having us today. And I ask for your vote for county board. JD. Thank you, this has been amazing. And I have, I'm 50 years old, and my entire life has been about public service. And each day that I get up and every time I get an opportunity to see my two-year-old granddaughter, I think about the future. I think about her mental health in 10 years. I think about housing for her in 20 years. I think about the environment for her. I look through that lens and I see that right now in Arlington, we have failed leadership. You can't become a leader by reading a book. You can't become a leader by just going to a course. You have to be tested and tried. And you have to be at the grassroots of where the community is. North side, south side, east side, west side, and central. For the past 14 years, that's what I've been doing in this community, working to try to make tomorrow a better day. I hope that on June 20th, you look towards the future and think about steadfast leadership and put me as your number one candidate on the ballot. Thank you very much. Natalie. This is a watershed election. It's about who has the best vision for Arlington. What's on the ballot on June 20th is whether we in Arlington want unplanned density for the sake of density throughout the county or environmentally sound transit oriented development that meaningfully promotes affordability and diversity, which is something all of us support. I support smart growth in our community. I have the requisite experience, I have high creativity, strong leadership skills, and deep community roots to hit the ground running on day one. I, my general philosophy is this, I love Arlington. I truly believe that most of our problems in Arlington, our issues, are rooted from the fact that we're such a popular place to be. There are things we need to fix here, but there's also things we need to preserve. Thank you very much. I ask, I would be honored with your number one or your number two vote. Thank you very much. Jonathan. Thank you again for having this event. I got into this race because I believe in the opportunities that exist within these 26 square miles. Opportunities to expand on affordable housing while also protecting green space. Opportunities to continue to support our small business developments, which have been the backbone of our economy. And opportunities to also expand greener methods of transportation and for us to lead the way in green technology here as a county. But in order to do that, we need to be inclusive of all diverse perspectives in the county. So we cannot pretend to make policies in the best interest of everybody in our community if we're not all represented. And in Arlington, 20% identify as Latinos, yet there's no Latino on the county board. 
two out of every five Arlingtonians are millennials with the average, average age being 35, yet in July there will not be someone of that age on the county board. And I think most shockingly, 60% of Arlington are renters, yet we do not have a voice on the county board as we're making these types of policies. I will bring that voice and those lived experiences to the county board as we continue to move forward and make this one of the best counties and places to live. So I encourage you to go to JonathanDrongle.com to learn more and rank me as your number one choice. Thank you. Susan. Well, thank you for having us um, this evening. Seven candidates is a lot, um, but really grateful to be with you. And I do think that I should be your number one vote. I uh, would be honored for you to consider that. I do bring a depth of experience in not just having ideas, but actually implementing ideas and, and iterate the, iterating them for and with this community. And I think that that's very important for where we are as a community right now. So I commit to you that I will work hard every day to get housing and planning right for our community, to reconnect our young people following the challenges of the um, pandemic, and to get the basics of good government working, responsiveness, water turning on, toilets flushing, exciting things like that for an engineer like me. Um, and I would be honored to have your number one vote, SusanForArlington.com. Please join us. Marie. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Um, I really have genuinely appreciated the opportunity to be a candidate in this race. Again, my name is Maureen Coffey. Um, you can go to MaureenCoffey.com to learn more. I jumped into this because I really think that Arlington needs a vision for where it is we're going. Um, we have been such a great community and we want to keep ourselves such a great community, but that means we have to ask the hard questions. We have to find answers to those questions that are concrete. Saying things like we want more affordable housing is really wonderful, but it's not helpful if we don't say where it's going to go and how we're going to get to that. Um, we have to have these hard answers and that means having difficult conversations, bringing everyone to the table. As a renter, I'm living through the dysfunction of the housing market as I get outbid on apartments by people willing to offer three or four hundred dollars more per month for an apartment. Um, this is not sustainable and we really do need to find answers for our community that brings everyone in, that recognizes that everyone is struggling right now coming through COVID um, and come together to make Arlington better, create the community that we want to see ourselves. Audrey. Uh, thanks again to the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event. The choice in this year's county board race is clear. Elect machine Democrats who either embrace the county board's missing middle agenda or will be forced to go along with it once elected. It's your choice. Either swallow the lie that missing middle will redress racial inequities or accept the fact that it will force existing minority homeowners out of their homes and make it even harder for others to qualify for a mortgage. If elected to county board, I won't claim credit for rubber stamping done deals. I won't push harmful housing policies that threaten Arlington's quality of life. I will promote proven alternative solutions to the housing crisis. If you're dissatisfied with the direction of county board, now is your opportunity. Vote Clement, independent for county board on November 7th, because county board needs more than a rubber stamp. Well, thank you to all seven candidates for joining us for this Chamber of Commerce candidate forum. Six of these seven candidates will be running for the Democratic primary. That's going to be held on June 20th. Early voting is underway right now at several locations. The primary is using ranked choice voting, which you can learn more about with a QR code on the slide up on the screen. Audrey Clement is running as an independent and will face the two primary contest winners in the general election on Tuesday, November 7th. Thank you for joining us and have a good night.